Rumi's poem about the silkworm reminds us that we have to pause and look for what the heart is telling us. Everything else may be important, it may be surrounding and guiding, but we have to go to what the heart is telling us. We look for broad capacity we have for weaving a love that can warm people and provide safety. We spin up a soft place to land. Silk and weaving provides us with warmth and beauty. And when I originally thought about how to craft the Sunday service, which was many weeks ago at this point, I was still deep into the subject of creativity, which was one of our themes. I don't even remember. May? Was it May? I think so. But then I became more pulled by the heart. What was really speaking to me was about belonging. This morning, I want to explore the creative place in our hearts that we all have in order to manifest belonging. I also want to acknowledge that I was inspired by writing this sermon by UU Minister uh, Stephen um, Jonathan, who I met at Camp Elliott, which maybe, maybe none of you know what Camp Elliott is, but it's a Unitarian Universalist summer camp where families come from all over the US. Um, and he spoke there, and I am lucky enough that Camp Elliott is often in my family's backyard on Hood Canal. So camp, the whole Camp Elliott experience is about being at camp with 240 people that you may not know. So it's all about how you build a community together. So what I learned um, kind of informed this service. Our first stop is the work and founder of Reconstructionist um, uh, in Judaism, Mordecai Kaplan. Some of you may know Kaplan's name. Kaplan teaches that there are three possible ways of identifying with religious community. Behaving, believing, and belonging. So I'm hoping by the end of this service, we can hold on to those three words. Behaving, believing, and belonging. Kaplan asserts that the primary form of Jewish identification is belonging. The intuitive sense. Ah, oh, I printed double-sided. I hardly ever do that. The intuitive kinship that binds every Jew to every other Jewish person across the centuries, from deep in history to the current world. And within this, whatever a Jewish person may believe or how they behave shapes and make manifest this bedrock sense of being bound to a people with a long shared history and a projection of destiny. So Jonathan says, Unitarian Universalism is akin to this, although we have significant differences, obviously. But he describes an agreement with Mordecai that religious community members tend to identify with their faith in their congregation in this behaving, believing, and belonging. So let's think about how the three of those three things fit together. There are behaving religious traditions, such as the Puritan tradition, from which you use are descended, especially on the Unitarian side, and the pietists of all religious traditions. Both make tremendous emphasis on how we behave. Behave properly. And that's why really inappropriate behavior or repeated inappropriate behavior can lead to excommunication. As our guest speaker, Reverend Fristad, told us a couple weeks ago, if you were here, back in those days, punishment passed as theology. And it would, if you were in the behaving church of centuries past, or currently, you're on your way to hell. But in our 18th century Unitarian history, we had two thoughts about behavior. Well, I'm sure we had way more thoughts about behavior than that, but we had two main thoughts about behavior. Some Unitarian leadership felt strongly that membership required a common devotion to the Christian faith. In other words, Unitarians needed to believe in and worship God as the object of their devotion and affirm that Jesus was a spiritual leader of some sort. 
not necessarily, they didn't, they didn't believe in Jesus being the God-human hybrid exactly. Some people did, some people didn't, but, but they believed in Jesus as a faith leader. The other contingent asserted that it was the ethical basis, how we live our lives, that should be paramount. How we behave toward one another, how we cared for our neighbors, was at the core of the ethical basis. It was this group's belief that behavior was a primary characteristic that tethered people in religious community. And that, so as time went on, that emphasis on behavior became more important than people's personal religious beliefs. So you can tell that over time in our denomination, that's what won out in these two schools of thought. There was also, of course, the Unitarian Universalist rejection of creeds, and that goes way back. So, however, for many faith bodies, creedal faith is paramount. In our country, creedal Christianity is easily found. And of course, creedal faith is not unique to Christianity and can be found in other religions around the world and here in the United States. I think it might be easiest to just have me quote Jonathan on this. The defining characteristic of such religions are, it involves assent to a particular creed or statement of faith. If the classic philosophers had been given to creeds, they would have said, I believe and therefore I belong. But creeds aren't obvious at the first glance, and they can even make their way into humanism and secular philosophies. It's creedal religion that universalists and Unitarians have rebelled against for hundreds of years. We don't want to be told what to believe, and we also think there is danger in being told what to believe. It doesn't allow us to manifest and to explore our own personal spiritual journeys. So in our faith, what's asserted that what we believe does matter, but, but what is more important is how the, our beliefs shape how we act. So UUism tried to find a place of acknowledging the importance of belief, and individual belief especially, and the impact on our behavior, but also trying to find that balance of not wanting to exclude anyone from religious community. Bad behavior, though, still can get you in trouble in the UU faith but hopefully you get called in instead of pushed out. And no less and no more important is the belonging traditions. Belonging tr traditions have the importance of shared identity, spiritual kinship, and belonging to one another is more important than what is believed or how people behave. Examples Jonathan gave was Judaism, Shintoism, and the Mennonites to some extent. And there, of course, is some flexibility. At the kernel is the sense in these ethnic churches where creeds often will have some give for ethnic cohesiveness. In recent years, Jonathan is not the only faith leader that has asked us to consider, uh oh, did I lose my pages again? I did, but oh well, I will wing it. Jonathan isn't the only UU faith leader who asked us to consider whether we have overemphasized belonging and minimized behaving and believing. So that's kind of our question to leave with today. Have we overemphasized belonging to our group and minimized believing and behaving. So for Jonathan, he says, huh, sometimes it's because I wish to avoid count accountability for what I believe, not to mention the things that we do. And when he's talking about avoiding accountability for what he believes, he's, what he's saying is sometimes I don't want to be a deep thinker. So perhaps what we need to do is think about this as a triangle. Don't think about this as a trinity. I don't want to go, oh, I don't. <laughs> as this triangle of, of playing off uh, 
the belonging and the behaving and the believing. And I suspect that sometimes one will be stronger in your life and the other two will recede slightly. And it will depend on what you are struggling or pondering at the time. But when we think about belonging, to me the piece is, we need to think about belonging in its broadest sense, that we belong to the broadest tapestry of all of humanity. Our belonging needs to be a kinship of everyone. You'll see this in recent emphasis by the Unitarian Universalist Association, which is our sort of umbrella guiding body. That's where the emphasis lately on the anti-racism and anti-oppression work comes from, so that those on the margins who are not excluded and not thought of get centered with the rest of us. So can we think about all three aspects, behaving, believing, belonging, as being essential right here at UUFB if we inspire to hold integrity? From time to time, we will emphasize one over another. But to put the other two too far back, Jonathan will warn you that that is idolatrous. If behaving, believing, and belonging are not held together in some sort of creative tension, then we risk falling into the same sorts of idolatry that led many religious movements to a pile of rubbish in human history. We are naive to think we can have meaningful human relationship without mandated behavioral standards and some commonly held beliefs. Now he's a little heavy handed with this. I don't preach it quite that heavily, but I want you to hear that piece and I will give you the softer one. So this is why I think we use covenants in Unitarian Universalism. We make promises to one another. We promise to ple and pledge to keep them to the best of our ability. However, we also know we can't always keep our promises and our pledges because we're human and things happen. And sometimes we don't react at our best. Sometimes we're not using our deepest thinking. But we also, I think, should consider the teaching of Earl Morse Wilbur, who is again, someone out of our Unitarian history. He gave us a slogan from Unitarianism before the merger with the Universalist of freedom, reason, and tolerance. The freedom, reason, and tolerance include all three ways of behaving, if you look at it that way. Behaving, believing, and belonging. So if our behavior can be guided by freedom for everyone, and our beliefs can be built upon reason, and our way of belonging must be embedded in tolerance. And to go back to the silkworm. The silkworm is the heart that binds it all together. This is how we recognize one another and how we recognize that we are bound together by our human experience. We're kindred spirits in the work of humanity. And like the heart of Rumi that was inspired by the silkworm, may the belonging we seek and provide be woven from what is soft. May it be carried on the wings that provide lift and let us hold on to the sacred. So we begin and never cease. Amen.